Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. Welcome to the world. So do you feel like it kind of the stars aligned a little bit? I mean, I've I've read that you've you describe yourself as a spiritual person. So do you feel like all of those things kind of came together and this was this was the right moment? This was the right thing to happen at the right time. For sure. I, I really do. It's I was uh, to say like the, the time waiting for the last two years to play professionally again was difficult is like. I mean, it was really difficult and, and um, just kind of fighting that the pressures from society and like mm. your family, whether they mean it or not or whatever, just um, it was really tough. And but there was all of these things that I think I was supposed to be I was supposed to not get to go yet. Like I was supposed to be at home spending time with my family for for said reasons. I was supposed to be spending time coaching and giving back to the game by by teaching younger girls like I was supposed to be doing all these things which then made me even more probably prepared and excited and ready for this opportunity when it came mm -hmm. um adding like some some health things too like I've always struggled with with my iron and for the last two years I've been trying to get that back up which I don't know if you guys know much about that but, but like if you have low iron you can't really perform like your your muscles don't get the oxygen they need um mm -hmm. to perform and so it, I literally got like blood test right, right before uh, I was contacted about this team, like showing that I finally had it fixed. And so I was like all excited, like, oh, wow, you know, maybe I still Perfect. can do this and, and boom, it happened. So there's a lot of reasons that I think, yeah, it just felt like um, a little bit like it was God's plan all along for me. Mm. So wait, and, so. and during that time though, I mean, I guess it's a little easier afterwards to see like, okay, this was meant to be, this was meant to be. But like you said, during that time uh, that you're spending at home without a contract thinking, is it time to hang up the boots? That can be quite hard to be in the present and see it as that this is all part of the plan until it actually gets to that, to that payoff. So like, how did you approach that mentally going day to day during this, this, uh, this time of uncertainty? Yeah, well, I think obviously we've all had to deal with and kind of confront that idea of uncertainty with COVID and how it's affected so many of our lives or all of our lives. And for me, I think um, having to just let go was a, was a big thing, letting go of all of the plans that I thought I had or the way I thought things were supposed to be and just trying to be present and, um, and, and just being patient and letting, letting things happen as, as like, they're going to happen. And I think I, I had this really strong passion that I knew I wanted to play again. And that has like always been what's helped um, keep me going and keep me just staying focused on, on that goal. But now that like went up and down at different times, but um, I think I, I just, yeah, tried to let go of like the plan and um and just wanted to give it like another few months to see if something would happen and um yeah I mean but it, it was definitely very hard and um I didn't know if it was gonna happen or not I just felt like I can always take something from this time like while I'm waiting and and it was I guess particularly hard because when you feel like you're not doing something productive then you feel like you're wasting your time. And that's the hardest part of like, well, if, if I'm not going to get a chance to play, then, then I should be, you know, figuring out what job I'm going to get, or I should be, I should be contacting these people or these people, or I should be figuring out exactly what I'm going to do. And I should be start trying to start that process or whatever. But at the same time, you feel like you don't want to do that because then if you do that, you put all this time and energy into that. And then something does happen then you feel bad. Like you have to tell these people, okay, never mind. Actually, I'm just going to leave. Mm -hmm. So that was the really, I think, mentally hard part for me this year was like, I felt very stuck. I felt like I didn't know what I should put my time and energy into because you just really don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think I just, um, I think I just told myself, you know, if I have some amount of time where I do feel like I'm in limbo, 
that um, it's okay. And I tried just not to put a ton of pressure on myself and um, was accepting of whatever outcome was going to, was going to happen. And then I would just, you know, take whatever step came when the time required, <laughs> giving it a little bit of time and putting a little bit of a deadline on it too. So, yeah, I love that though. I mean, you kept the faith and it's, it's certainly to your point, it's always that discussion of plan A and plan B and you shouldn't have a plan B because it distracts from plan A, but it's also like, you kind of need the plan B in case plan A doesn't work out. It's, it's a very difficult thing. And I think um, the mindset that you came to is, is one that I think even in all this still in these times of uncertainty is something that people can take from 100%. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you signed for Fenerbahce this, this November um, and I've seen the results and I've seen um I mean, you've worked your way into the team right away, starting uh, center mid. I love the way you play. It's like that six, eight, that quick on and off the ball, getting into the pockets of space. Um, I can't wait to watch a live game, but um, you've had some, some, some crazy games recently. I mean, you guys played uh, Galatasaray very recently, uh, which was a 7-0. You played in the, in the big stadium, huge crowd. It seemed like a great, great time. Um, but there was also a lot of things that surrounded the match, including some, some um, statements that you guys as a, as two teams together uh, kind of came out and came out with. So can you tell us about that experience and um, bring us into that day, that game and those statements? Yeah, we um, with Galatasaray, it was really our manager that I think it was her idea to because this was the first time that two huge clubs were coming together as women's teams both both of us are are the first were the first women's clubs at, at Galatasaray at Fenerbahce for women's football and I think she took that opportunity to to say something to society um that needed to be said because there has been a lot of violence against women um, in Turkey and obviously around the world. And it was in um, like connection with the UN's um, 16 day campaign to end violence against women. So it was kind of around, that's like the timing fit to play the game for that, for that cause. And just the statement that it made that here we are like two new women's teams and we're coming out and yes, we're, insane rivals um but at the same time we are all women and we're standing here together saying this this is more important and um so that was really special honestly like the the moment when we were all standing out on the field and holding the banner and standing there it was the very first game like since I've gotten here to Istanbul first professional game I played in two years just standing there and holding that banner and like in that huge stadium in Istanbul, I was just like, wow. I mean, I was like, I couldn't believe that I was standing there. And I got to, I got to say that I got to play the game and use my game to say something that's so important. Um, so really special. Um, I think it being such a huge rivalry game, there's a lot of other emotions going into that game. Like we had to win that game, you know, because it was such a huge rivalry and um, it was just an awesome experience. And I think it um, hopefully meant a lot to people watching as well. I can, I can only imagine. I think it's something that maybe we're a little privileged to not see how serious the issue is being in the U.S. And for you to take the step abroad, I mean, it, it must have been a real, uh, just a, a crazy experience to just have those years sitting out and to, to come back and to be a part of, uh, of something that was so important in your first game. Um, I can only imagine the emotions, like you said, coming to you just at once. And then, I mean, even in the, in the game, uh, I saw the two assists and you guys balled yeah. out. So, I mean, how nice was it to be on the field playing, doing what you love again um, with this big message, you know, that you guys presented and balling out. How was that? Yeah, it was a special night for sure. I think we all came out just guns a blazing and 
we had been in a camp that whole week and they, our coaches and staff had prepared us for like battle and we were just so hyped and ready. And then to get to go and have such a good performance as the first game and how much attention that that brought to women's football. Um, a lot of people in Turkey, like didn't know that women played football. I think honestly, like when we would walk around and our Fenerbahce stuff, people on the street would be like, Oh, you know, cause they, there's Fenerbahce women's volleyball, there's women's basketball, there's other sports. They'd be like, you know, basket, basket, or like volleyball, volleyball. And then our manager would be like, Oh, football, women's football. And like the look on people's faces sometimes was like, why do they look so surprised? Or like, why do they look so shocked? So I think just having a result like that, um, not only just for the Fenerbahce family, but for, for women's football or for football, Football fans in Turkey it was a huge statement um, that I think got a lot of attention and it was a really good thing overall for, for women's football. 